afternoon. Welcome to KKM LCFI Sussex Outreach's first Sunday service live via Facebook and also in Zoom. And I would like also to welcome our family and friends here in the UK, in, in Mauritius, and other international outreaches, and our families and friends around the globe. And praise God, so please bear with us. After the, the preaching, I would like also to announce that we will have the, the breaking of the bread. So everyone, please prepare your bread and the fruit of the vine for the communion. And to start this service, uh, I invite you to pray. Let us pray. Praise God. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We honor you. We glorify your name. We magnify your name. You're an awesome God. You're a great God. Lord, you are the source of everything. Apart from you, we are nothing. Lord God, this afternoon, we live up to you our Sussex Outreach first live streaming. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness in us as, a, as an outreach, as a church. Once again, Lord, we invite your holy presence to be with us. Lord God, I pray, Lord, your divine anointing will uh, touch us, Father, Lord God, every part of the service you will anoint and consecrate. Thank you, Lord. I also pray that you will prepare each one's heart. Lord, those who are watching live in their houses, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will minister to them. Lord, your word is powerful. Your, your presence is powerful. So, Lord, we, we, we pray, we claim and declare, Lord, breakthrough. We claim and declare salvation to the lost souls. Thank you, Lord. We entrust to you the rest of the service. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, let's move to the announcement. Shall we all arise for our prayer and intercession? Hallelujah. In John chapter John chapter 16 verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. With the chaos around us, with all this pandemic, everything is a struggle. This world is corrupt. This world is not perfect, but church, prayer and intercession is powerful. Corporate prayer works. So as a church, let's continue to lift our, our struggles, our um, world crisis in the, in the hands of God. So let's arise and as a family, you can hold hands and let's pray together. 
Hallelujah, Father God. Lord, we continue, Lord God, to lift your name up high, O God. Father God, you, Jesus Christ, alone, Lord, will be lifted up in this place higher and higher, O God. Lord, we humble down ourselves unto you, Father God. Forgive us for any sins that we commit, O God. Lord, any iniquities, Lord God, that hinders us to come before your throne, O God. Lord, remove it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, Lord, we recognize you as the only source of everything, Lord God, that apart from you, Lord God, we are not thing, O oh God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, for you are good, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, that you are you are our God, O oh God, our great God, Father. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we may not know, Lord, what is happening in the world, but you do. But thank you, Father, for the strength. Thank you, Lord God, for our spiritual eyes and spiritual ears, Father God. Lord, to hear and to see, Lord God, the revelation that comes from you, Father, that in this world, in this world, may we, we may have, Lord, um, chaos, O oh God. We may have this um, uncertainty, Father God, but we are secured in you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you, Lord God, for the assurance, Lord God, that we have to keep joyful, O oh God. We have to remain, Lord, still, Father God, because you are with us. And Lord, thank you, Father. Lord, instill in our hearts to be joyful all the time, Lord, despite all this turbulence, Lord God, that we are um, um, experiencing in this world, Father. Lord, we continue to pray for all the nations of the world, Father God. Lord, thank you, Jesus. The desperation of the world, Lord, to have peace Peace, O God, Lord, is unfathomable, Father God. But Lord, we pray that they will seek you in the most special way in Jesus' name. That they too will have salvation in you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we pray that you will quicken their hearts, O God. Lord, that the salvation, Lord God, will come to them, O God, in Jesus' name. The genuine salvation, Lord, will come to them in Jesus' name. As a nation, Father God, Lord, every nation, Lord God, will bow down to you in Jesus' name. Lord, will say, will speak speak lord of you oh god jesus you are our lord and savior in jesus name salvation to be upon all the nations of the world in the mighty name of jesus even lord all the governments in the world father god lord we pray that the leaders lord god will have this godly wisdom lord that comes from you alone father god lord we pray that you will visit them oh god in jesus name lord god you will give them wisdom on how to to deal lord god with this crisis lord god with all this happening in the world father god in jesus name lord Lord, wisdom that comes from you. Lord, we pray for peace, oh God. Lord, thank you, Father. Peace that comes from within, Lord, that comes from you alone, Father God. Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We remember all the churches right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Lord, that as a church, Father God, Lord, we will continue to stand up for you, Jesus. Father God, Lord, we will not be um, lukewarm, Lord God, in our service to you, oh God, Lord. We continue, Lord God, to come, come against, Lord, the spirit of spiritual lukewarmness oh god in the mighty name of jesus lord the spirit to, spirit of god of procrastination in the mighty name of jesus thank you father god lord that we will continue lord god to hunger and thirst lord god for your word oh god for your truth oh god in the mighty name of jesus father god thank you lord lord we declare your lordship and kingship in our lives oh god as a church father god thank you for the unity and the harmony in the mighty name of jesus thank you father god lord we we declare father god lord you are lord of all father god even lord and lsf sussex outreach father god thank you lord god thank you lord that you made these things possible oh god even though we don't um, see lord god physically father god in the physical church father but thank you lord god that we as a outreach oh god we continue lord god to worship you in spirit and in truth father god lord we continue to pray as well for all the outreaches lsf outreaches father god that are doing their um, sir, Sunday service today as well, Father God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that your word, O God, has been spoken as well, O God. Thank you, Lord, that every member, Lord God, every member of the outreaches, Father God, will continue, Lord God, to thirst and hunger for your word, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. You alone reign in each outreach, Father God, in Jesus' name. We even continue, Lord God, to pray, Lord God, and declare good health, Lord God, um, to our um, senior pastor, uh, Mike, Lord God, in Philippines, oh god in the mighty name of jesus thank you father god to all the leaders to all the pastors oh god in jesus name internationally father god in jesus name thank you lord god thank you to all pastors father god that they will not be discouraged but they will continue lord god to run this race lord god with endurance and perseverance in the mighty name of jesus thank you father god for all the frontliners lord thank you father even the essential workers lord god lord thank you father for the protection lord god thank you father thank you jesus even lord we pray for all the people 
who are not feeling well right now, Lord God, those who had um, the symptoms or any sickness, oh God, Lord, we declare healing. Lord, by your stripes, Lord, they are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Those people who are in their sick bed, Father God, at home, Father God, Lord, thank you, Lord, once again, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you have visited them, oh God. Lord, thank you for your divine intervention. Complete healing, Lord God, to be upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, even for those families, Lord God, each family represented, Lord, in this outreach, and even, Lord God, all the outreaches in the churches, Lord God, in this world, Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you that you alone will reign, Father God. Thank you. They will continue to be joyful, Father God. Lord, from the uh, from the Father, Lord God, to the mother, to their children, Father God, thank you that Jesus, you reign in their homes, oh God. Thank you, Father. And as an individual, Father God, thank you, Lord, that we will continue, Lord God, to lift your name up high, Father. Higher and higher, oh God. You alone, Jesus Christ, we continue, Lord, to lift up in this place, Father. Thank you, Lord. Continue to bless us, Lord, for our service today, that we will receive our portion today father god we will receive fresh revelation from you father god lord we come against lord the spirit of spiritual blindness and spiritual deafness oh god in jesus name father god open our eyes lord open our ears father god spiritual ears and spiritual eyes lord god to receive your word to be open and willing to receive what you have in store for us today father god thank you father thank you lord we just continue to lift up your name oh god we praise you we honor you in jesus name amen and amen hallelujah thank you thank you father amen thank you jesus we will proceed now to our uh, praise and worship so shall we con uh, shall we remain standing let's continue to uh, praise the lord in spirit and in truth if you are in your homes let's um, stand up and um, open your hearts and prepare your hearts to worship the lord in spirit and in truth and just receive something new revelations from the lord today Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I found in the desert place, where I walk to the wilderness. Blessed be your name. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory and His name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Praise God. Uh, thank you, Lord. And thank you to Brother Jeremiah and members of LSF Sussex Worship Team. Uh, glory to God. And uh, now let's move on to the next part of worship, which is giving. May I read to you a passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, starting in verse 6 to 7. But I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Church, giving is like sowing a seed. Like a farmer, if you sow a seed, if you plant a seed, you will have harvest. But sometimes if we plant a seed, it is destroyed by other animals or by, by floods but biblical sowing if you plant something the harvest is sure you want to be blessed you want to have a bountiful harvest the biblical uh, saying is planting but when we plant or when we give our tithes or offering, the Lord said, each one of you will give us his purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves the cheerful giver. So church, if we plant a seed of giving, if we want to give to the church, it must not be under coercion or compulsion but with a cheerful heart for God loves the cheerful giver so let's give our tithes and offering in your screen uh, you can do it uh, electronically uh, to our visitors and friends if God is touching you to, to give you are welcome so just message to the inbox and the media team will write back to you praise God and now let's welcome Sister Rian for operatory song.
Thank you, Sister uh, Rian, for that uh, wonderful song. Uh, now, may I request everyone to please stand for our uh, scripture reading. Our text this morning, this afternoon, is found in Romans chapter 5, verses 18 to 21. Have your Bibles ready? And please rise. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as one man's offense, many were made sinners. So also, by one man's disobedience, many will made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the one offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more, so that sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign to righteousness, to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you for this wonderful time together. Lord, we believe that your word is powerful. Your word where thoughts will convict, will save people from their sins. Lord God, a Holy Spirit, enlighten us, guide us as we hear and listen your word this afternoon. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, actually, I'm a bit uh, nervous. I'm not used in preaching uh, in front of the camera. And the first time I used this Zoom and online live streaming, I, I feel that I am talking to myself. But I know uh, unseen viewers are there. I know that the Lord will speak. Uh, through his word, I know that the Lord will speak through his servant. So I would like to invite everyone to uh, make yourself comfortable wherever you are and prepare your hearts and mind to receive your portion this afternoon. Friends, lately we heard chaos, we heard violence. We witness the coronavirus, the pandemic, is striking from country to country. Things are just going worse and worse. Do you think all of this, what are happening today, are new things? Do you think that we can blame some people or government of what is happening today? But you know, friends, what caused all of the world's troubles today, the answer is S-I-N, sin. Again, I repeat, the cause of all troubles, all trials, all chaos in this world today is sin. If you read the book, of Genesis, the first book in the Bible, it records the first crime committed. And do you know what is the first crime committed? The first crime committed is murder. And do you know who is the first murderer? The first murderer, sadly, is a brother. Cain murdered Abel. This is the first time of the manifestation of human sin recorded in the Bible. After the killing of Abel, sin did not stop. This ripening and worsening 
of sin from generation to generation. How I wish that the world gets better and better. But sadly, what is happening is reversed. I've met one friend in my, during my, my college days, and he said to me, I don't like to read your Bible. And do you know why? He said, your Bible is a bloody book. And it came to my mind, uh, I cannot repute. If I read in Genesis, there's killing, Exodus, Leviticus, number, up to Malachi. There are lots of violence. There's lots of killings. There's lots of murders. There are lots of sins recorded in the Bible. You know what? The first time I met this person, this friend of mine, I don't know how to explain to him. But you know what? Now I realize that what he's telling me is true. Every kind of sin committed in the Bible is mentioned. Even the sins of the godly men, like the sin of David and the sin of Moses, are all recorded in the Bible in detail. Other religions of the world try to hide, try to, if you like, uh, delete the, the crimes committed by the religious leaders. They want to hide. They want to cover up. Why? Because they are ashamed of the sins committed by their religious leaders. But in the Bible, every sin is written. Every sin is exposed. Now you will ask me, Brother Ray, what is the reason why God allow every sin, horrible sin, shameful sin, why God allows all of that written in the Bible? Church, there is only one reason why the Bible exposes sin. So that people will know that there is no human solution of sin aside from Jesus Christ. That men and women from Genesis to Revelation until now, they need a savior. They need a messiah. They need the captain of their salvation. Without the savior, all of them will perish in eternity. That's why Old Testament, if you write, uh, if you read in the Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi, it records about the prediction of the coming of the Messiah. Later on, we will know more about the preparation and coming of the Messiah recorded in the Old Testament. Jesus came to save sinners. He is the only one who can solve the problem of sin. Again, I cannot change myself. Government cannot change people. People cannot change themselves. If you want change, do you know what? The only thing that can change your life is Jesus Christ. No one, no one, no other person that can change man's heart except our Lord Jesus. So this afternoon, my preaching topic is Jesus Christ, the divine exchange. Uh, you can see that in the slide, in the screen. Jesus Christ, the divine exchange. But to understand fully about this, this message, we need first to understand 
the teaching of the imputation of sin. But before that, let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you. We honor you. We glorify your name. Father, enlighten us by your word. Lord, touch us. Lead us. Lord, to the truth of thy word. Thank you, Lord. Your word will not come back to you in, in void or in vain, but Lord, it will accomplish. Lord, to your purpose, to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, let me first read to you the meaning of imputation. Before we understand about the divine exchange in the Bible, let me share to you what is the meaning of imputation of sin. The simple meaning of imputation is to, to charge, to assign, to transfer, or to impart. Again, what's the meaning of imputation? Imputation? To charge, to assign, to transfer to someone, or to impart. In the New Testament, the best example I can give you is when Paul told to Philemon, the slave owner, that he said, if his slave Onesimus, Onesimus, he was the slave who became born again believer. Now he is un still under uh, another slave owner, which is uh, Philemon, who is also a Christian. And Paul said to Philemon, if his slave Onesimus owed something, charge it to Paul's account. <laughs> what Paul said? Okay. Anything Philemon owed to you, charge it to me. If you like, Paul is giving a direct debit card to Onesimus. Okay. Whatever uh, to, to Philemon, whatever Onesimus need, just use my debit card. He can use it unlimited. Charge it to Paul's Paul's account. That is the best example of imputation. You know what, church, uh, during this lockdown uh, season, all businesses are collapsing, all businesses closed. Most businesses did not survive. But there is one business that flourishing despite of this lockdown. Do you know what that uh, what business is flourishing during lockdown? It's the online shopping. Oh, my wife, you will, you will love this uh, online shopping, you know? <laughs> uh, I remember when I just get, uh, I got uh, married uh, and my wife is at home and when she went to work, after hour and hour, I, I heard knocking on the door. And this is deliveries. I said, I did not order something. I said, oh, this is the name. Oh, it's my wife. Oh, okay, okay, I'll receive this. <laughs> the next day again, delivery. I said, oh, we need to talk and we need to pray. Uh, Mahal, uh, <laughs> I love you in the Lord. But if you order just uh, without control, I think uh, <laughs> it won't be a blessing. During lockdown, Amazon uh, company, uh, this company, uh just last just uh their income doubled or tripled because of this lockdown so if you are bored please please have self control don't just click that click oh i like this bag online 80 percent discount wow <laughs> do you like 80 percent discount i like that 80 percent discount that's a big discount oh what wh what is the brand of this bag it'll be Made in Limiri, Batangas. <laughs> It'll be Louis Button or Beton. I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, Louis Beton. 10,000 pounds. Oh dear. But, my love, it's 80% it's discount. <laughs> so,
So, how much the cost of that uh, bag? 2,000. And the computer said, press now, buy now. <laughs> Don't be tempted. Otherwise, uh, too much spending. More than you earn is not a blessing. What, why I am mentioning this? Because of the meaning of imputation. Paul told Philemon, whatever Onesimus owed, charge it to Paul's account. Now, I would like to share to you the three basic imputations. Number one, the imputation of sin to human race. Number two, the imputation of man's sin to Christ. And number three, the imputation of Christ's righteousness to believers. Yeah? Uh, you can see it in the screen. And by the grace of God, we will learn all of these three basic imputations in order to understand the divine exchange. Number one, the imputation of sin to human race. Romans 5.12 Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world, the death through sin, and thus death is spread to all men, because all sin. Church, Adam is our representative. Yeah, Adam is a representative of man. When Adam sinned, we all sin. When Adam fall, we all fall. So the imputation of sin to human race, it is a judicial declaration of God. Just like when the doctor said, oh, because this uh, village, majority of them are COVID infected, I declare the whole village as COVID infected. I will quarantine the whole village. Everyone. So with us, when our representative Adam sinned, God declared all humanity as sinners. So physical death came to Adam and to all human race, not because of individual sin. So Romans 5 declared all of us as sinners, even before you commit sin. Oh, pastor, you will ask your pastor, it is, it is unfair. I haven't committed a sin, then you declared already, uh, you, you declared me as a sinner? Romans 5, even before you were born, you are a sinner. Why? Because of the so-called imputed sin. So please don't uh, forget this term, imputed sin. Example, an infant or a baby do not commit sin. But there are lots of infants died, no? Early, maybe in, still in mother's womb, babies died, one month old or two months old babies, some of them died. But remember, these babies who died did not commit sin yet. Why they died? Because of their sin? Because these babies committed sin? No, the reason is because of imputed sin. I hope you understand the logic, the explanation of imputed sin. Infants' death are caused not of their personal sins, but due to Adam's imputed sins. That's why in Romans 3.23, you can read it in your Bible, for all have sinned. In Romans 3.23, 10, there is none righteous. We need 
righteousness of God. Why? Because all of us are sinners. All of us are non-righteous. Why? Because of the imputed sin of Adam. During my college days, I, I remember uh, a story where there's a, phrase, there's a case filed to Adam in the court, in American court, if I remember. And do you know what? The case, the accused Adam of uh, initiating or originating sin. I don't know if this case will prosper. How can you arrest Adam? I think the only way that you can arrest Adam, if you convict Adam in the court of justice here in within America or in the UK, the best way to arrest him is during resurrection. <laughs> when, <laughs> when all believers will be resurrected, maybe that's the time that you can arrest him. But never, never you can charge Adam of his sin in human court. But it is true that Adam originate human sin. So an infant carried three kinds of sin. In the screen, you can see that. An infant carried what? Three kinds of sin. Number one, the imputed sin. This is Eden sin imputed to the baby. The transmission of imputed sin is not through our parents. But it is a direct imputation by God to all human race. That is imputed sin. Number two is original sin. This is the sin nature. So a baby, before he was born, the baby has the so-called sin nature. This is the physical and spiritual corruption. It is transmitted through parents, human parents. That's why... When the baby was born, the baby cannot commit sin because, it's because of his innocence. But the moment the baby will grow, five years or three years old, four years old, I remember my, uh, my niece in Philippines, my pamangkin, three years old at the time, and I told her, not to touch any chocolate from the friends. But one time I caught my niece eating chocolate. You know, chocolate is nice. And <laughs> I caught her and I said, why did you eat the chocolate? I told you not to eat the chocolate. And I said, no, I did not eat the chocolate. Yeah? <laughs> I did not eat the chocolate, but in fact, she is eating. This three-year-old child learn how to lie. Lying. No parents is teaching their children to lie, but why two or three or four year old children are lying? No one taught them to lie. It is because of original sin. Sin nature. That's why when the baby grow, as he grow older, as he mature, sin multiplies. Sin multiplies. If they will not receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, this sin became uncontrolled and it can cause physical death and even spiritual death. That's why we parents, we always guide, teach our children with the word of God. Otherwise, this sin nature in their hearts, in their minds will continue to flourish. That's why Jesus is exempted from this original sin. Why? Because Jesus has no, is not born of the flesh, but Jesus is born of the spirit. So there is no transmission of the original sin. That's why Jesus is the perfect savior. Jesus is sinless. He's the only perfect righteous. Why? He's the perfect mediator because he has no sin nature. The third sin is personal sins. As the child grow, he became a practicing sinner. <laughs> when he was born, he was a sinner. But when she grow older and older, 
she became a practicing sinner. That's there, start lying, then cheating, and all other kinds of sin will just follow. So, friends, man is sinner from womb to tomb unless Jesus is received by faith. Amen? Again, in your slide, you can see it. Man is a sinner from womb to tomb unless Jesus received by faith. That's why, church, this is the reason that we need a Savior. This is the reason why we need a Messiah, a Deliverer. Without Jesus, without a Savior, we will all be lost in eternity. So what is the solution? In our next slide, what is the solution? Let's move to the next slide, the imputation of man's sin to Christ. So the solution of this sin, because Adam's sin is imputed to us, the next solution, how to get rid of this sin in us, is the imputation of man's sin to Christ. This imputation is a reversal imputation of the first imputation. Before Adam's sin imputed to man, but now man's sin is imputed to Christ. Can you type amen in your, in your computer, in your Facebook? If you are with me, hallelujah. In the Old Testament, there is a symbolism of sin. There is a teaching of imputation of sin to Christ taught in symbolism. I will, uh, I am reminded of the so-called escape goat. Do you know, have you read this uh, story in the Bible, the so-called escape goat? The high priest, yeah, the high priest will, will lay hands the head of the goat. No, lay hand and confess the sins of Israelites. So the moment the priest will, the high priest will pray, he is releasing the sins, no? and guilt of the Israelites to the scapegoat. This is imputed sin. The transfer of sin of Israelite to the goat. This is the perfect picture of Jesus Christ. That's why we, we call it divine substitute, divine exchange, divine transfer of sin. Your sin, my sin, was transferred to Christ. This is the meaning of imputation of man's sin to Christ. I hope you get my, my point. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Christ became our divine substitute. He is the Lamb. He is the sacrifice. He died on our behalf. It is also called divine exchange or divine transfer of sin. If you read in 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he made him who knew no sin, that is Jesus, to sin for us, that we might become righteousness of God in him. Church, Jesus became sin who knew no sin. Jesus is man's sin bearer. This is a, there was a judicial transfer of man's sin from, to man's sin to Jesus Christ. Church, 
the transfer of sin to Jesus is not an easy task. It's not easy for Jesus. You know, Jesus is a holy and a sinless God. He hates sin. And now, He is carrying loads of sin. Not only your sin, but the sins of the world. Could you imagine the spiritual uh, torment in the holiness of God? You are blameless. You are innocent. You are sinless. And now, all your shame and pain, Jesus is carrying Church, not only the physical suffering of Jesus highlighted in this passage, but also his spiritual suffering. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you read in your slide in 1 Peter 2, 24. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live in righteousness. By whose stripes you were healed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Church, remember the beating, the scourging, the nailing of Jesus Christ in the cross. That's why one of the last words of Jesus in the cross is, it is finished. It is finished. Your salvation is secure. The payment of your sin is done. Now, Christ's pain is your gain. Amen? Can we give a clap of praying for the Lord? Christ's pain is your gain. Hallelujah. The transfer of sin has been done. Payment, the ransom has been paid by the blood of Jesus. Not by corruptible, that means not by, by money, not by dollar, but paid by the very own blood of Jesus. Church, to those who believe in Jesus Christ, by faith will receive pardon and all his sin is imputed or transferred to Christ. Aren't you glad that all your sins are transferred to Christ? Aren't you glad that now you are a new creation in the sight of God? Aren't you glad that you can say all things has passed away? Behold, all things have become new. You are now a brand new creation in the sight of God. Amen? Hallelujah. I like to drive new car. Yeah, than, than old car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, brand new is, uh, is good, no? All new, new. The steering wheel. Yeah, the, the seats are new. Praise God. In the sight of God, you are brand new. I don't know if you are brand new in the sight of your wife or your husband. <laughs> Oh, uh, Pastor said I am brand new. I am a new creation. Uh, I think uh, I, I need to, to shop more in, in, in online. <laughs> this means nothing has been changed. Even after lockdown, <laughs> you've been shopping. Brand new creation. Wow. Why? Because you are washed by the blood of Jesus. That is imputation of man's sin to to christ hallelujah church when jesus nailed in the cross all your sins are nailed there amen all your guilt are nailed there all your rebellions all your unbelief are nailed there when christ was nailed in the cross all your sickness has been nailed there all your, all your pain, all your shame was nailed there. Hallelujah. By his stripes, you were healed. You are healed. 
Are you glad that you are healed by the blood of Jesus? Can you say amen? Can you praise the Lord? Lord, thank you. By your blood, by your stripes, I am cleansed. I am now a new creation. Hallelujah. Don't say that with the Bible said you are a new creation, you became uh, more physically handsome. Yeah? <laughs> oh, uh, uh, my wife, uh, the pastor said I am now a new creation. Uh, do I look handsome now? Of course, the wife will say no. He will say, yes, you are handsome. Yeah? Not only physically, but above all, spiritually. There is that chains of light, chains of heart. That makes one person handsome and beautiful. Amen? Not those who done some of those, how you call it, uh, you want to change your nose, you want to change your eyes. Yeah? The only one that you cannot change today is your height. No? I don't know how. No? I want to be tall because this pulpit here is <laughs> quite high, no? Uh, church, uh, don't go to the doctor to change your nose or your, your eyes or your face, yeah? In the sight of God, you are brand new, amen? In the sight of God, you are beautiful. What makes man ugly is sin, amen? What makes man ugly? is sin but now that you've been redeemed you've been changed you became a new creation wow in the sight of god you are precious in the sight of god you are spotless blameless and pure this is so-called imputation of man's sin to christ hallelujah shall we give a clap of praying for the lord By his stripes, by his wounds, you are healed. Oh, what a beautiful name it is. What a wonderful Savior we have. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. He predestined you. He called you. He justified you. He died for you. He will sanctify you. He will change you from glory to glory until his coming. What else you can ask from your Savior, from our Savior Jesus? You have been set free. Hallelujah. Church, that's why when you die, even Jesus will raise you up in glory and bring you where he is to be with him in eternity. Aren't you glad that before you were born, God already knew you? Aren't you glad that before you were born, your name is written in heaven. Aren't you glad that before you were born, you are still in your mother's womb? God knows every part of your body. Amen? Then when you were born, God called you to be saved. When you became a sinner, Christ died for you. After Jesus died for you, he said, now I'm going to heaven, but I will give you the Holy Spirit to be with you. Wow. And this Holy Spirit will sanctify you, will change you from glory to glory. After we become born again, yeah, by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, it will make us a new person. It will change us, our ugly character. God will change us through his Holy Spirit. That is the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believers. Not only that, after sanctification, next is glorification. It means that Jesus did not end his mission in the cross. Jesus is not only your Savior, but Jesus will also uh, bring you to glorification. What I mean, when we die, we will not die in vain. 
when we die, Jesus will resurrect you in the end of days. That's why Paul said, in the twinkling of an eye, when the trumpet will sound, the dead in Christ will rise. Yes, there are pandemics right now. There are violence, killings in this world. But you know what? We Christians are the most secure people in this earth. Even if we die, death is not an end. But death will usher us to eternity. Wow. God did not only save your soul, but also save your body. Christ done the salvation of your soul in the cross. But the redemption of the body, it will happen during the resurrection. That's why Jesus is our all in all. Jesus is our security. Hallelujah. Church, friends, if you haven't repented of your sins, if you haven't received the author and captain of the salvation, now is the day of salvation, for tomorrow may be too late. You know what? Life is uncertain. We don't know what will happen to us. In the UK, about 40,000 now died in this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. It's sad. Lots of people are mourning. Loss of loved ones is not easy. We have friends who, who, who passed away because of this pandemic. Life is uncertain. Amen? Death is sure. But don't be afraid. Because your life is secure in Christ. Your sin was imputed in Christ to give you hope, to give you future, and even to give you eternal life. So from birth to death, if you are a believer of Christ, you are secure in Him. Hallelujah. Let's give a clap offering for the Lord. The last one, the third imputation, is the imputation of Christ's righteousness to believers. You can see it in the slide. The imputation of Christ to believers. Let us read in Romans 3, 22 to 23. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness with it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. Take note of this word, righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction. Just as Adam, one writer said, just as Adam's sin is imputed to us because we are in him, so Christ's righteousness is imputed to us because we are in him. Church, before God's imputed your righteousness in you, God looks the sinner or God looks in every person a sinner or unrighteous. But now that you are covered with God's righteousness in the sight of God, you are a brand new. In the sight of God, you are righteous. Question, Brother Ray, if I am righteous in the sight of God, can I still commit sin? <laughs> If I am righteous in the side, side, side of God, can I do what I want to do to continue in sinning? Anyway, in the sight of God, I am righteous. As to the first question, the answer is yes. Imputed righteousness, you are declared righteous in the sight of God, but you are not made righteous. Take note of this uh, distinction. You are declared righteous, but you are not made righteous. Meaning, you can still commit sin. 
because of this mortal body, sinful body. Your righteousness in the slide and holiness does not mean perfection. There's a difference between righteousness and perfection. The righteousness here is a judicial declaration of God. Now, I declared you righteous. That is the declaration of God. But you are not made righteous. Church, we are only made righteous completely during the resurrection. When God will clothe us with a glorified, incorruptible body that cannot sin anymore, that cannot enslave us anymore, this is the glorified, righteous, eternal, incorruptible body. And that's the time that Christian cannot commit sin anymore. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we give a clap overing to the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus provide a righteousness better than we lost in Adam. When Adam sinned, he lost his, his life. He lost, his, he lost the, the Garden of Eden, the, the nice place. But church, even though Adam lost the Garden of Eden, the moment you receive Jesus Christ, you gain heaven. Amen? Heaven is better than Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden is not even a perfect place. Remember, uh, Satan managed to sleep in, tempting Adam and Eve. So it's not even a perfect place. Yes, the sin, but God give us a better place when we believe in Jesus Christ, and that is heaven. When Adam sinned, they lost life. Adam became mortal being. The Bible said, Adam lived about 930 years. It's still long. Sadly, most people today died in their 80s or, or 90s. But you know what? Adam, when he sinned, he lost time. He lost life. But in the second Edom, that is Jesus Christ, we gain life eternal. Which is better? 930 years or eternal life? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that eternity is secure in you the moment you believe in Christ? That's why Christians, we are not afraid to die. Why? Because our life is secure in Jesus. Our eternity is secure in Jesus. I remember a story of one dying dad in the hospital. This dad is quite restless, quite restless, shouting, screaming, but he is a Christian. He's a Christian. And the son said, Dad, why are you so restless? Are you afraid to die? You know what the dad said? I'm not afraid to die, but I'm ashamed to die. <laughs> why do you think this dying man said that I am ashamed to die? You know what? Because that man, after he became a born again, he is a gifted singer. He had a Grammy or award, if you like. He had a lot of tapings, blockbusters tapings in the world. He is popular, but never in his life that he sang for the Lord. Never in his life that he share his talent, his giftings for the Lord. When he is young, he loved the world more than the one who made the world. He loves the pleasures of the world more than the giver of life, the giver of righteousness. That's why in his deathbed, he said, I am ashamed to die. Church, 
Life is short. Life is temporary. The only thing that you can give is your time, is your talent, give things. Give it to the Lord while you can still serve. Amen? Give it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Christ gave his all in all. His blood, his life. Will you not give your all for God? Sometimes we complain if we serve God too much. I know serving God is not easy. Sometimes it will, uh, no, your time, your, your effort, your everything. But I challenge you, I encourage you, it's not in vain. Amen? As one writer said, yeah, life, yeah, what matters most is what you have done to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Church, that's the message this morning. Christ knew you before you were born. Christ pardoned you when you are born. All your sins are direct debited to Christ's bank of grace. Amen? All your sins are what? Direct debited to Christ's bank of grace. This is the divine exchange. Satan is accusing the believers day and night. Remember, Job in the Old Testament. No, before we end, uh, last story. Remember Job in the Old Testament. Satan is roaming around and he said, uh, let me tempt Job. Let me give him sickness and disease and he will curse you. So church, Satan is the accuser of Christian believer. If you read in in Revelation, Jesus is the oh uh, sorry, Satan is the accuser of Christian believer. Whatever you've done, in secret or in public, Jesus will accuse you to God. Jesus has a long list of sin. This is the sins that committed by my brother. One, two, three. This is another sin committed by my sister. One, two, three. Satan will come to God and accuse every Christian believer. But you know, praise God. Jesus is our defense lawyer in heaven. Jesus is our advocate. When Satan go there and accuse us in many other things, Jesus will say to Satan, Satan, yes, these are the sins that my sons and daughters committed. But charge it into my account. Satan, you're accusing my people, my sheep, of doing this kind of sin. Satan, look at my hand. Look at my side. All sins has been paid in the cross. My blood has been shed. My body has been offered for you at me. Church, let's praise the Lord. Let's glorify the Lord. Let's serve the Lord. In this kind of uh, chaos, pestilence, troubles in this present day, strengthen your faith in Jesus. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Hallelujah. And if you are listening right now and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I challenge you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Life in Christ is an endless hope, but life without Him is a hopeless end. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful word. Thank you for the message of God. Lord, thank you, Lord, for that divine exchange. Lord, you died in our behalf. Thank you, Lord, because of your death and resurrection. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we gain life eternal. We gain security. 
we gain heaven. We gain divine strength, divine joy that comes from you, divine peace that comes from you. Oh Lord, we just give you praise and honor. I just pray that the word that we receive, Lord, it will be applied, it will encourage and strengthen to all of us, wherever we are, wherever they are. In Jesus' name, Amen. Church, uh, before we gonna end our service, I'm gonna invite you to, to join us in, in breaking of the bread as it's been announced earlier. We gonna celebrate Jesus. We gonna remember uh, what the Lord has done. Thank you, Lord, for imputing us your righteousness. Thank you, Lord, for imputing our sin in you. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. So, you may prepare now your uh, elements of this institution of the Last Supper. Now, let me read to you from Luke. 22 verse 15 to 20 Then he said to them With fervent desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer For I say to you I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God And he took the bread gave thanks broke it and give it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. So this bread symbolizes the body of Jesus. Given for us. Bruised, pierced, to give us life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that your body, thank you, Lord, became a sacrifice. You became the lamb, spotless lamb, a perfect sacrifice. Thank you, Lord. Through your blood, through your death, Lord, we became spotless and pure before your presence. We remember, Lord, your death in the cross. We remember your Lord, your love, your grace given to us through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, let us take the bread. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and take it. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God coming. So likewise, he also took the cup after saying, And the Lord said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. So this, this one, uh, the fruit of the vine uh, symbolizes the, the blood of Jesus shed for you in the cross. Let's drink this together. Let us pray. Father Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you Lord for your death that give us life eternal. Thank you, Lord. Your pain is our gain. Thank you, Lord. We And I pray, Lord, that those people who haven't received you as their Lord and Savior, I pray, Lord, that, Lord, they will receive you as the author of their life, as the fountain of life, as the source of salvation. Thank you, Lord. I pray, Lord, for the salvation of the world. I pray, Lord, that every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord now and in the days to come. Hallelujah. Praise God. We, we don't want to end this service without a praying time. So to our viewers, 
I, I would like to invite you to type your prayer request. We as a church, we, we value the, and we acknowledge the power of prayer. Since this lockdown, we received as a church uh, lots of prayer requests. And praise God that one by one, no, uh, the Lord heard our prayers. There are lots of healings. Some, some of our family and friends who have been confined in the ICU, some are infected with COVID-19, but praise God, indeed, nothing is impossible to God. So, church, I continue to uh, encourage you to seek God in prayer, believe in God in prayer. So right now, feel free to write the prayer request. Or if you want your prayer to be in private, just message us in the inbox. And be assured that we will record your prayer request. And during our prayer meeting, we will mention you in prayer. Hallelujah. Praise God. Indeed, God is a miracle working God. Now, feel free to write your prayer request online. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And in due time, we're gonna play a slide thanking the Lord for all the answered prayers. And let's celebrate and thank the Lord together for what He has done in us amid of this crisis. Hallelujah. If we have some prayer requests, uh, Okay. Praise God. Uh, let us read this one. What one of our so any private prayer will be sent to to the inbox uh, directly. Hallelujah. So you can type your prayer request. Praise God. Even after the service, if the Lord is revealing to you to pray for something, if you are in need, so feel free to drop your prayer request in your inbox. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I would like to close the service in, in prayer. Once again, thank you, Lord. Uh, we pray. Father Lord, those who are sick, right now lord in their sick bed in their houses in those who are in isolation lord because of this covid 19 lord i pray lord that wherever they are right now lord you will visit them you will uh manifest your presence lord i pray lord your healing touch lord be upon them your divine touch lord be upon them thank you lord nothing is impossible to you god oh lord thank you lord i pray lord that this uh Sickness, Lord, you will turn it for good. We will turn it, Lord, for your glory. Lord, you will turn it, Lord, as an opportunity for salvation. Thank you, Lord, that they will have great encounter with you. Thank you, Lord. I pray also, Lord, for strength, comfort to the families, Lord, whom their loved ones are in the hospital. Thank you, Lord. Give them joy and peace that comes from you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We... Also, Lord, pray, Lord, for the peace of this world, Lord, amid the chaos, amid the violence, Lord, that is uh, going around in every country at the moment, Lord, you can change the heart of every person. Lord God, you are only the solution of this sin problem. Thank you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that let, let love reign in each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't matter Lord, our origin. It doesn't matter, Lord, where we came from. It doesn't 
uh, Mother Lord, uh, what one language we speak? Lord God, I pray that your divine love will envelop to each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord. I pray for world peace. Peace that comes from you. If people will receive the peace giver, which is Jesus, no doubt there will be peace in this world. Hallelujah. If people will repent their sins and accept the Savior, no doubt there is a change in in our country. There is a change in our society. But again, Lord, thank you, Lord, that we can trust in you. Thank you, Lord, that you invited everyone to come unto you, believe into you. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust in you. In Jesus' name, all of this we pray. We give you grace, praise, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining. Next time, you can fellowship once again. So six outreach. God bless unto all our families and friends and Christian believers online and some are in their churches. God bless.